So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing 17 of the biggest YouTube mistakes I've made over the past 17 years that could be costing you views, subscribers, and respect. So stay tuned to see which ones you're guilty of and you won't believe number 11. Number one, not making eye contact with the lens. One of the most common mistakes, especially for new creators, is looking at the selfie screen instead of the lens. The problem is, if you're not making eye contact with the lens, this creates a disconnect between you and the viewer and can hurt audience retention. Mistake number two, not starting. When I first started YouTube, I was uploading videos for my church, but I had the desire to start a channel of my own. However, I hesitated for three years. I was waiting until I felt ready, waiting for the perfect camera. I was allowing perfectionism to hold me back. But the truth is you gotta start before you're ready. You gotta just punch fear in the face, punch perfectionism in the face and press record. Which brings us to mistake number three and that is focusing on gear instead of the content. So there's actually a technical term called GAS that stands for gear acquisition syndrome. This refers to the dopamine rush you get from buying new gears or accessories that you don't actually need. Equipment that you buy but don't use, books you buy but don't read, software that you buy but you never master it. The key point here is that to succeed on YouTube, you actually have to upload videos on YouTube. And it's not the camera that's gonna make the difference, it's the content that's gonna make the difference. So start with whatever camera that you already have and level up as you go. Mistake number four is a lack of planning. When I first got started with video on YouTube, I made the mistake of winging it instead of planning ahead. A lot of times this would look like just having a vague idea or no idea for the video at all, just turning the camera on, starting to capture footage, ending up with tons of extra footage, not knowing how to sort through it all and how to really edit a final product because I didn't plan ahead. What I learned was that the cure to this was starting with the end in mind and then reverse engineering backwards. What's this video about? What's the title? What's the thumbnail? What footage do I need? What kind of story do I wanna tell? What's the messaging here? And I found that a few minutes of planning led to an exponential return on not just my energy, but on the views and subscribers and impact that the final video had. Which brings us to mistake number five, and that is comparing yourself and trying to be somebody else. I've found that sometimes watching others can make me inspired, and at other times it actually can make me insecure. I learned that comparison is a killer of creativity and it's a thief of joy because when I look at somebody else's gifts, talents, and abilities that I don't have, that usually doesn't lead me to a place of feeling encouraged and inspired to create my own content. However, by identifying your own strengths, what makes you uniquely you and tapping into your own authenticity, whether that's your quirks, your humor, your stoic personality, your bubbly personality, a huge key to your success on YouTube is being you times two and not trying to be somebody else. Now smash the like button if you've been getting value so far and let's hit number six, which is making selfish content. The truth is YouTube is your tube. You can make whatever videos you want, but that doesn't mean anybody's going to watch them or that anybody is going to give you views and subscribers and attention. If you want your videos to perform better, ask this question, what value does this video add to the viewer? What topics are people actually searching for? What topics are people actually interested in? Mistake number seven, weak titles. No joke, I actually posted hundreds of videos before learning how important titles were. Mistakes I made it included doing an interview with somebody and just putting their first and last name and the word interview with no detail about what the viewer would learn in the video. And the cool thing is with tools like ChatGPT and vidIQ's AI coach, you can start writing great titles even if you're an absolute beginner. Now you might've saw this one coming, but mistake number eight, is weak thumbnails. Some of the mistakes I see people make with thumbnails includes too much clutter. There's too many words, there's too many images, there's an overall lack of clarity. Don't forget, a lot of people are consuming YouTube on their smartphone. So another mistake is having your images or your text be too small and unreadable. Number nine is wasting time during the start of your video. Ever since I started creating videos and editing, I've been using Adobe Premiere. And I remember eventually I discovered a program called after Effects. This allowed me to make a really cool intro with music and a logo and sound effects, but here's the problem. I learned that nobody cared. If you're starting your video with a 10 second, 20 second swoop in logo that's got some electricity and a cool sound effect, 
you are wasting the viewer's time and hurting your video's performance. When the video starts, you wanna cut right to the chase with you on camera, with a powerful question, a powerful opening, and a powerful hook. Seriously, just fixing that mistake will radically improve the performance of your YouTube channel. If you wanna level up your content with the use of royalty-free music, then look no further than Epidemic Sound. They're one of our favorite resources when it comes to finding dope music and dope sound effects for our video. Their database is so easy to search for like songs and like sounds, and really music creates the vibe in which you want your viewer or listener to feel. And maybe you're doing a sponsored ad read or something, being able to use tracks right off Epidemic Sound and that won't get you demonetized on YouTube or anywhere else, but the creativity becomes unlimited when you have a resource like Epidemic Sound. If you wanna check them out, we have a special deal going on. Just check out the link down in the description below. Thank you Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. Now, not a lot of people talk about mistake number 10, but here's what it is not creating systems. If you think about it, when it comes to YouTube, everybody has the same goals. I wanna get a thousand subscribers. I wanna get a silver play button. I wanna go full time. I want my business to grow from the views and awareness that my channel generates. But of course, a lot of people struggle to reach their goals. And one of the reasons that happens is because of a lack of systems. And so what are systems? Well, they are the habits and the patterns and the routines and the checklists that you install into your life so that you can produce consistent results on YouTube. This is one of the reasons why I created the VRA system. That is a process that I've used and now tens of thousands of people in our community have used to create consistent results on YouTube. YouTube, this process of reverse engineering and then researching and then recording and then releasing the video the right way and then ultimately reviewing the results and repeating the process. And the better your systems, the better the results you're gonna get on YouTube. We gotta hit mistake number 11 and here's what it is. Sacrificing your long-term brand for short-term money. This includes pushing products you don't actually believe in or jumping on trends that don't actually align with your channel topic. This is a huge temptation that new creators fall into because you're so hungry to grow the channel, to do this full-time. You're so flattered perhaps by getting an invitation to your first brand deal or sponsorship. And all of those things are good, making money, getting views, building your personal brand. But if you're compromising what you actually believe about a product, or you're chasing views and vanity metrics disconnected from the core purpose of your channel, then ultimately you're gonna be sacrificing your long-term brand just for short-term views and money. And let me just encourage you that after 17 years on YouTube, sitting here now, I look back and I regret any time that I've made short-sighted decisions instead of decisions based on legacy, impact, and the ultimate brand that I wanna build. Mistake number 12, unrealistic expectations. The opportunity is real, the chance for growth is real, but YouTube is a marathon and not a sprint. It is a mistake to underestimate the amount of work and grit and patience and time and learning and skill building that it takes to succeed on YouTube. But the good news is, if you go into this with the right mentality, realizing that Rome wasn't built in a day, it was built brick by brick. Your YouTube channel won't be built in a day. It'll be built one video at a time over time. So just get started and have realistic expectations. Mistake number 13 is covering too many topics on one channel. One of my favorite things to do is look back at my Sean Cannell YouTube channel and reflect on the different topics I covered in the span of like 20 videos. One week I posted a video with camera tips and equipment tips, which is a great topic. But then I posted a video reviewing a BarkBox subscription with toys and treats for our two chihuahuas. Then I posted a video with my green beans recipe Recipe, and man, that thing got over like 60,000 views. So I thought, I'm Martha Stewart, I'm Anthony Bourdain. But then I abandoned that dream and I did my review of the amazing Spider-Man. Like what happened? Is my channel a movie review channel now? I was all over the place. I was covering too many topics on one channel and my growth was suffering as a result. So here's a phrase worth remembering or writing down. Never upload a video your subscribers didn't subscribe for. Answering that question will force you to define who is your channel for and what value does your channel provide for the viewer? It's also worth considering that if you've already been posting videos and getting subscribers, 
Why are they clicking subscribe? What topics are they clicking subscribe for? And if you veer away from those topics, then don't be surprised when your views suffer. Mistake 14, trying to figure things out on your own. Listen, I've got the utmost respect for hard work, grit, putting in the time, just putting your head down and grinding. That's cool. But did you know that there's a better way? Like rather than trying to figure out everything out on your own, you could ask the question, who knows how to do this that I could learn from? And I understand I'm preaching to the choir because you're literally watching a video about YouTube strategy, but I want to encourage you, don't try to pioneer your own path when someone else has already blazed away. Of course, there is no substitute for you putting in the practice and putting in the work, but trying to figure everything out on your own is the slowest road. And so go faster by getting help. Now, mistake number 15 is inconsistency. Now you may be thinking, Sean, I've heard that before, but here's the thing. Most people really talk about being consistent in one dimension, and I have at least five dimensions to share with you. Now, of course, the first dimension is uploads. Like you actually have to upload videos on YouTube to be successful on YouTube. And the more consistent your uploads over time, the better your results. But that's really just one dimension. The second is consistent energy. And what I mean is a consistent tone, a consistent feel to your videos. It's almost like saying a consistent quality. Are you showing up with the same level of energy and the same level of quality in your videos? Now, another dimension of consistency could be your message. Are you staying on brand, on message? Are you covering so many topics, kind of like we covered in the last point? Or do you have a consistent theme and through line through all of your content. And think about how that one relates to building your brand. I mean, are you saying what people want to hear or are you saying what you actually believe? And even another dimension could be a consistent brand. Do your videos, does your content have a consistent look? Does it have a consistent feel? Is there a cohesive brand or does it just feel all over the place? Random, no theme, no through line. All of these things make up consistency. And the more consistent you are with your content on YouTube, the more momentum that you'll build over time. Now, when I think about my last 17 years on YouTube and I think about mistake 16, this one is probably the biggest mistake I've made consistently, and it's this. Trying to do too many things at once. A lot of times people will come to me and say, okay, I get it. I shouldn't have too many topics on one channel. So instead, I'm gonna start like two or three channels to divide up my content. Big mistake. You see, if you try and chase three rabbits, you'll end up catching none of them. And I'm massively guilty of this because I think it was 2014 or 2015 when I realized I was operating four or five channels. If there's one banner lesson I've learned in my career, it's that you need to focus. And focus stands for follow one course until successful. If you're multi-passionate and you wanna do multiple YouTube channels, channels, I want to challenge you. What is the strongest one? Which one are you most passionate about, most proficient at, and also has the best opportunity of producing an income and money? Because fast forward to today, and I do run multiple channels, but I've also built a team that supports me. This might be the biggest mistake that creators and entrepreneurs and the ambitious make overall. Too many social media platforms, too many projects, too many YouTube channels, too many ideas, not enough execution on one thing. So make a plan, work the plan, kill distractions and protect your focus. Which brings us to mistake number 17, which is giving up too soon. But here's the thing, if you're feeling frustrated or discouraged with your growth on YouTube, I don't blame you. In fact, I made an entire video about this point and you can click or tap the screen to watch that video or check it out in the show notes.